So can I see a quick show of hands of all the people in the audience, maybe some boos, of all the people who actually hate traffic? <laughs> well, you're not alone, because I can guarantee you that the people that are sitting in traffic on this highway in Shanghai absolutely share your pain. And so do, so do the people in New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, and the list goes on and on with cities around the world stuck in gridlock traffic. You know, traffic is affecting millions and millions of people every day. And it's costing US drivers some 300 billion in wasted fuel and productivity. And it's not just a big waste of time, fuel, and money, but it's hurting our environment. Uh, automotive exhaust is the absolute leading cause of pollution anywhere on the planet. And in fact, slower moving vehicles emit more carbon than vehicles traveling at highway speeds. And we all know that carbon dioxide is a leading root cause to climate change. And not only is it really bad for our environment, but it's bad for us people, causing major mental health issues for people who are stuck in traffic every day. I mean, take it from this guy. <laughs> I've seen worse. Uh, but it causes breathing disorders. It's been linked to mental growth problems with children who are exposed to carbon emissions more so than children who grow up in clean air environments. It's been connected to Alzheimer's and, according to World Health Organization's, cancer. And uh, when you take this and you frame it in the context of global urban population growth, by 2030, we're talking about growing from 3.3 billion people in urban centers to about 5 billion people in urban centers, where some a half a billion people have the potential to be impacted by traffic jams. And by then, global gridlock, where traffic is no longer a matter of inconvenience, but a matter of human welfare where people, food, and healthcare will have a real difficult time moving around unless we do something radically different. The world is urgently in need of innovation and mobility, and I can't think of a better place in the world to innovate solutions to problems that we played a big part in, in, in creating. I mean, in fact, it was here where we democratized ground mobility for the mass traveling public and that technology is now choking urban centers around the world and hurting our environment. And there's been a lot of innovation. On-demand ride sharing, such as Uber and Lyft, has been great. It increases utilization of the vehicles on the road. There are fewer cars, less carbon emissions. It's a great step in the right direction. Micromobility has been really, really popular, obviously. They're, they're eco-friendly. They are low in cost to own, operate, and maintain and another great step in the right direction. The automotive industry has been spending billions of dollars electrifying vehicles, only to be stuck in traffic without the carbon emissions, which is nice, but we're still stuck in traffic. So I want to talk to you about something a little bit different today. I want to talk to you about skipping traffic. And it's not flying cars. Not only do I think they're ugly, but there's a lot of reasons why it just doesn't work. Okay, but what I do want to talk to you about is electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, eVTOLs. Five years ago, I stood on this stage with a concept for elevating traffic between cities, airports, and suburbs using clean, quiet, and connected air mobility solutions. It could take off like a helicopter, cruise like an airplane, and connect you to the big city to the big airport with clean, quiet, and connected air transportation. Now, in my view, I've always felt that these machines should be very flexible. They need to be doing a number of jobs from public safety to emergency response to passenger, uh, medivac, uh, cargo mobility, and I am um, you know, I also said that we should employ automotive electric vehicle technologies because that's where the cost savings are going to come from. 
We're going to use the same manufacturing processes as that we use to build high-performance vehicles like the Corvette. And I will say the aircraft I'm about to show you has more torque than 12 Corvettes combined, which means insane performance. It will use the same technology we use in the small drones to do aerial photography and mapping. And I'm really proud today to introduce you to the Sigma-6 electric VTOL aircraft designed, built, and tested right here in the Motor City. Yeah, we're pretty stoked about it. And uh, not only is it a VTOL, but it's flexible. You can swap another payload with a fresh set of batteries. So we're not sitting around waiting for a recharge. It features an autonomous ground vehicle that has all-wheel drive, all-wheel steering. It can fit in and out of tight spaces in distribution centers and factories and drive those loads right out to the flight, flight operations line and be flown across and above traffic. The great news is, is we've got traction now. Not only do I have a full-scale aircraft, but now we're being fast-tracked by the United States Air Force to do the job of moving cargo and doing emergency medical response. We are now uh, engaged with the U.S. Forest Service because we'll be able to use this technology to perform resupply missions to firefighters on the front line of the fire and deliver supplies like chainsaws, water, food, change of clothes, or swap firefighters out. Now, when you think about scenarios like Ian, we could use it for extraction, emergency air ambulance services. Cargo, we'll be able to skip traffic with cargo. We just got an order for 25 aircraft to do automotive cargo between the big hubs and the surrounding plants. Just last night when I was practicing for this event, we got an order for 50 aircraft from the United States Mail Management Service. Completely unexpected. Uh, I didn't expect it that quick, let me tell you. So super pumped about that. And uh, maybe one day that autonomous ground vehicle will come pick you up, take you to a vertiport, connect you to a Sigma-6, so that you can skip traffic between cities, airports, and suburbs. Now, my team, I am grateful for. They've done an incredible job, performed miracles, building not just an EV toll and an autonomous ground vehicle, but we did it in under 24 months. And I'm so thankful for them and our supplier partners. Um, a lot of questions I get asked is, does it fly? We started testing in August. Uh, unfortunately, our battery supplier short shipped us and we couldn't get the full vehicle off the ground with uh, the available batteries that we had. So we packed it up, we put it on a truck, and we shipped it over to the auto show, introduced it to the world as the next generation in mobility, and we received all kinds of new inquiries. So the question is, is what are we gonna do while we wait for the next set of batteries to continue our development? We partnered with the city of Detroit. We're deploying all new digital infrastructure at Detroit City Airport as a model for the rest of the nation because all this technology is great. But if we don't have digital infrastructure to manage the traffic in the sky, we've got nothing. So as of next week, we begin the planning and deployment phase for this next generation in infrastructure so that we can connect the nation's 5,000 airports create a mesh network for transportation so we can elevate that traffic above those damn roads so you can drive less and you can do more. And I'd like you to join us in being a part of the future of mobility. Visit our website, follow us on social media, and be a part of it. Thank you very much.